Fuck him anyway. Uh, Dr. Merritt Cox. in Connecticut. All right. You did? You Dr. Adam Cox is calling in any moment now. His book is called uh, No Mind Left Behind. This is uh, this is something that our listeners are very, very um, interested in. Are they? Uh, yes. Uh it's, yes, uh, yes, 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 they it's, are. Uh, it's a, a fine book and has a lot of um, tips uh, for for your children. Let's uh, say hi to Dr. Cox right now on the Opie and Anthony Show. Dr. Cox! Yeah, hi. hi. How are you? Good. Hello. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony Show. Hey, I'm glad to be with you guys. Yeah, we see that your book is called No Mind Left Behind. Right. What would you say the basic gist of the book is? The basic gist of the book is that there are millions of kids being diagnosed with what's called ADHD, which is almost a very outdated concept. Right. Because, yeah, the idea is that, you know, a lot of these kids mm -hmm. are really having problems with things that go beyond hyperactivity and attention. <laughs> And one of the problems in, in yeah. the United States is that we got so many kids being over medicated with this psychiatric <laughs> medication. And if you're a poor kid yep. in the United States, you're a lot more likely to be medicated with this stuff than if you're lucky enough to come from a wealthy family. Well, that's easy to say, doctor, but do we have hard numbers? Well, I think that the numbers are coming in, and I think that what it's all about, the reason for that is that if you, if you come from a wealthy family, there's a good chance you either go to a private school or at the very least your family has access to expensive doctors who can give you the kind of information and guidance that maybe limit the amount of medicine that you're on. or that Yes, but Dr. Cox, dependent. Dr. Cox, I understand that if I may interrupt, but isn't that just survival of the fittest? Shouldn't the most wealthy of the families be the ones that really do get... I mean, you know, the world needs ditch diggers, too, you know. <laughs> well, I, I certainly hope that's not the case. And let me tell you, yep. uh, to be yeah. honest, I, I was one of these expensive doctors for a lot of years, and I just got sick and tired of the double standard in children's health care. I get sick and tired of seeing so many kids unnecessarily on this medicine when there were things that schools and families could do to help these kids get their brains wired in the right direction. So, Adam... Uh is it really possible to immunize a child or teenager for STD? <laughs> I, I really have no idea if it's possible to immunize a teenager. Oh, for immunize, STD. immunize, immunize. What's that word again? Immunization. Immunization. Yeah, right. immunization. Immunization. From way back when you got a shot when you were a kid. Sure. But the but the deal is is that there are things that you can do. It's like you know, it's like a parent or a teacher is the conductor of an orchestra. There are there are ways that we can intervene with kids to actually rewire their brains to limit the extent to which right. they have problems with focus, mm -hmm, with problems mm -hmm. with self control. Adam, I mean, if I may, not to interrupt. I don't like to, but it sounds good. But I have to take issue with you here uh, if you have again our experiences may be different page 148 I call your attention to emotional obstacles to living the considered life now you say here some kids have trouble applying the skills they possess in high profile situations performing in public and the example you give uh, Adam if I may Moira finds an excuse to drop out of a play at the time last minute because she hasn't learned her lines Mm. Right. Yet she knows the lyrics of approximately 200 songs by heart. Eric is halfway through his college application but hasn't written his essay on time to apply to his top school. Eric says he forgot to check the deadline and besides their football team stinks. Elaborate if you would. Well, the, the deal there is, is that a right. lot of kids have anxiety and they freeze up at moments when they really yes. got to perform. Hey, guys like you don't understand that because you guys are so good at this. Exactly, and there. from wealthier families. Yes. And from wealthier families. Everyone at this table. Uh, I have noticed people from wealthier families are just a, a nicer... Uh, people to to hang around with, and shouldn't we? I mean, if it's gonna make a dish digger, just like Aldous Hux, Huxley's Brave New World. Yes, yes. You know what? Medicate the dumb. You know, if they're gonna, if, if that's their lot in life is to pump my mm -hmm. gas, why not give them pills that make to them make him yeah. happy doing yeah, just that? Do you want that? their brains rewired so they're hyper aware of their lowly lot on this planet that's for seventy true. years? Uh, <laughs> doctor, what do you think about giving drugs to people just to make them happy in uh, their misery? Like the same way beer makes a baseball game good, should we not give them drugs that will make a, a life of servitude? Doctor Stanhope's making a good point here, sir. Well, I, I 
think that the, the critical issue is, is that no matter what your job is in life, you want to have a sense of confidence and a sense of, you know, that, that you have found your way and you're, you're feeling mm-hmm. satisfied with what mm-hmm. you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the medicine is not necessarily always a bad thing, but the, the point is, is that there's a lot of ways that are healthier to get to that same point of uh, feeling like you can focus and feeling like you can perform up to your ability without being dependent upon that medicine. So, but you're saying sometimes the medicine is uh, okay. Yeah, I think nah, it's you're being glib. You're yeah, just being you glib. Know, demonizing medicine is like you know not a good idea because right. medicine helps some people, and I I make that point in the book as well. It's just that if we do what things book? for kids before they reach that critical age, and guys, it's age twelve, and let's be also 12. clear that it's boys that are the target of this because boys get diagnosed with these problems four or five times more frequently than do girls. Well, wow. that's because because no. women are really still second class human beings. Men are still the people getting stuff. Have done. Yes, if a girl's not up, yes. concentrating, all she needs to concentrate on is you know, feeding a baby. Hey, let me let me tell you that one of the big things that science has contributed Comment. to understanding why boys are on this medicine is that yes. if you look at the brain of a boy while he's paying attention in class, it's okay. doing fine when someone's talking directly to him. But and why would you look at the brain of a girl? Who cares? <laughs> Well, That's the brain girls, are icky. girls have, a, have a knack for listening so much better than do boys, yeah. and it makes a huge difference in terms of uh, how they perform in school. Hmm. Interesting. Why? Why is that? I don't even see how that could uh, could well, be. Yeah, Aren't we uh, all the uh, same? Imagine, imagine it this way, guys. It, it, and it's not just listening, but it's memory. Right. If you had to give somebody a list of twelve items that you wanted to get at the grocery store, would you rather that person be male or female? It didn't I matter think, as long as they didn't have Down syndrome. <laughs> well, that could be. True. If, if that person's Doctor Norton, they're gonna they're gonna do a much better job of remembering because so, guys, we guys remember almost only things that are important to us as individuals. So we guys are like computers for sports scores. Yeah. Yes. For yeah, yeah, yeah. All this kind of, you know, yep, our favorite yep. snack foods, but it's a problem well, in school. So if we're going to the tranny to... store, you send Jim Norton. Yeah. Dr. Cox, we've got a lot of parents uh, listening to our show right now. Let's uh, get to the very important question here from your book. Uh, what should parents do if their child's teacher or family doctor says the child has, uh, has an STD? Well, it's not an STD. It's ADHD that we're talking about. And if somebody says that your child has ADHD, the first thing you should get wait, wait, is AD... ADHD, guys. Oh, what's Attention that? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Oh, that uh-huh. makes this a little different. <laughs> you might have heard of it. It's been in the news a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. What has? <laughs> The first thing you should do is get a professional evaluation because some kids have food allergies or a learning problem right. or something else. And that can on. make them seem stupid. And the second thing you should do is make it easier for kids to focus and remember. Like if they're hmm? in a classroom where there's a lot of distraction, if they're near a window, if they don't hear, if they're having some other kind of problem, you got to make sure that these kids have some way to focus that's easier for uh, them. Doctor, doctor, just, you know, I understand, but what about news. a good old-fashioned, raised in the 50s and 60s, smack in the face? Absolutely a uh, bad idea. Why? Because, Let know, me tell you something. I know how I was raised. I know how uh, uh, generations of people were raised called in discipline. this country. It was called discipline. It was called getting a strap. It was called getting a backhand across the face if you didn't shut up. If you were hyperactive or had attention deficit. Let me tell you, if my attention wasn't on something that it was supposed to be, I got a smack across uh, uh, my face. All of a sudden, I'm paying attention to what I was supposed to pay attention it's to. It's called discipline. Uh, <laughs> Doctor, discipline, comment. Yeah, you, you are, you are, discipline counts, but here's the thing. Oh, all the time, we shut it. We moralize about these problems. Yes. And we say, hey, this kid isn't trying hard enough. He doesn't care enough. He doesn't feel it, you know, deep enough. And it's baloney because the problem is, yeah. is that he's got a brain Language. problem. And if we don't do something to help his brain work in an optimal way, all the discipline in the world, that's going to scare him. You may contain him for a few minutes, but nah. you're not going to. Get Let me really tell you uh, about about uh, the brain. Uh, my my dad got to mine by uh, having it shaken up against my skull a few times, <laughs> and uh, I seem to be a normal uh, uh, fucking guy. <laughs> I guess the jury's still plan? out on that. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, you want to take a few? <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> Talk. Come on now. Let's keep, it, let's, keep it, let's keep it fair. Let's keep it fair. If you only knew, Doc. Uh, can can you take a few calls uh, from our listeners? I'd be happy to. All right, uh, we got Mike in Houston. You're on with Doctor. Uh, uh, what's your Dr. Cox? Adam Cox. Oh, Adam Cox. I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Uh, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I thought I, I want to talk to the large Dr. Cox. I got this problem. I go, I go to a public toilet and I freeze up, and I, as soon as I get out, I shit myself, and it's so embarrassing. And I just wonder if it has anything to do with uh, my dad like peed in my mouth a couple of times when I was. Like, oh, that's not a real oh, question. Man. Boy, I don't know. I, I think that's a that's a complex problem that they can't be unraveled on the air in just a few. Short I think we minutes, were just goofed. I think we were just goofed. I think we. Sorry, I believe we were goofed. Yeah, I think, oh, yeah, I think that was one of those listeners of one of those shock jock yeah. stations. So. I apologize. Let's go to Barry in uh, Seattle. Hey, Doc Cox. I have a, uh, a a chubby little son named Eric, and I want to know if STDs play a role in his diet as far as eating mayonnaise a lot than his thinner brother. <laughs> Uh, again, that goes beyond my expertise because I'm a psychologist. Not you. <laughs> I know about ADHD, but not STDs. ADHD, he was talking about with his little fat kid, what's, uh, Eric. Is, what's uh, what's uh, ADHD? Yeah. ADHD is the virus that causes STDs. Right. Oh. <laughs> is it, is, uh, that, that's a link I'm unaware of, but I, I suppose there's a possibility. What is what is the ADHD? What is that? A Advanced ADHD human cancer. immune... Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Didn't it just used to be called uh, ADD? Yeah, but we've done away with that uh, term now. The yeah. American Psychiatric Association now just uses this term ADHD, and it basically uses that as the term to describe people who are just inattentive, as well as those people that are not only have trouble focusing, but also are... The American like, Psychiatrics, ah. why would you listen to a group of crazy people and what they say? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, on the phone, we got Paul. Paul, you got a question for Dr. Cox. Hello, Dr. Cox. Doctor? Hi. Uh, how do you feel about spanking a child? Like you pull down their trousers and you slide down their underpants and you put them over in your lap and you give them a good spanking. It's a, it's a bad idea generally to spank Why? kids. Uh, you know, it, it humiliates them, and, and usually yeah. it's boys that end up getting spanked, it and one of the worst things we can do with young kids is humiliate them. But we all yeah. got spanked as children, Doc. Sure. Well, you know, sometimes you give a very young child a, a short, uh, light spank when you're, they're going to yeah. do something that, like, run out mm. into the street where they could really be at risk. But when we spank kids that get older than three or four years old and we do it in a punitive way and we, we, we humiliate them and, unfortunately, we grow up to resent the people that spanked us Did, like did that. the senior Mr. Cox um, uh, spank you, Doctor? I think when I was a very young child, I probably got a couple of spankings. And you yeah. grew up to be a successful uh, uh, psychiatrist. Are you a psychiatrist or psychologist? A psychologist. Ah, yeah. so you can't uh, so prescribe any drugs, right? That's right. Oh, damn. All right. We really don't need to continue with this call. I was hoping to get a contact. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. The humor is part of the program. Uh, Dr. Cox, uh, yeah. ADHD. Yeah, it's, what does that stand for? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity now, Disorder. I, I got an observation here. It seems like you know a lot about this subject. Uh, what are you going to do with all this info? Well, what I've been on is a crusade across the United States talking Same. to schools and families, communities, right. about how we can uh, intervene. Now, with when you say kids. crusade, are you trying to wipe out Muslims? No. My, my crusade is against... Uh, 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 pharmaceutical industry that has but, committed itself to over medicating but why, kids. What, why travel uh, the country when you can write a book on the subject? Well, I've decided to do both, so it's really working yeah. out you, well. Oh, oh hold book. on, hold on, Dr. Cox. Wait, he's I got just, a book on the subject. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I think just he's, he's to, working uh, on it. I just want to make sure we get oh, this out. On the book? He's wor you're working on a book as well? Dr. Well, Cox? the book is out. You've got it there. No mind left behind. Oh, this? And uh, the eight essential brain skills every Wait, child needs yours? to thrive. Hey, and by the way, guys, if somebody actually wanted to find out what these eight brain skills were and whether their kids were up to snuff or not, uh -huh. on uh, my website, dradamcox.com, D-R-A-D-A-M-C-O-X.com, there's a checklist. You can check it out and find out for yourself if your child might be having a problem with one of these eight skills. Yeah, but, and if they skills, are, are you suggesting that we try to raise super kids no my i'm so glad you asked me that because oh, sometimes good. people say yeah are we trying to raise these kids who are like you know super productive and super efficient well not really but if we if we don't try what's to, the like, number one help reason kids, these kids are prescribed medication is because they have behavior problems we and how should someone handle a jacket. teacher who insists a child should be on right a right a right a line yeah 
Hey, I mean, have you guys heard of the concept? Are you I suggesting oh, we try to raise super kids? What's that? Are you suggesting we try to raise super kids? I, I am not suggesting that. Is it I'm too late for teenagers? No. Can we still build their brains? That's an interesting question. We can still build their brains. How yeah, should some teachers handle uh, a teacher uh, who insists a child should be on uh, Ritalin? I believe well, that was we, asked earlier. Right. But the, the main thing is to find out Doctor, exactly if I may, what, what practical things could a parent do immediately to make a noticeable difference? Caller, you're on the air. Please answer in 30 seconds or less. <laughs> well, some of the things... When you're talking, talking about building, building capable, capable kids, kids what, what do you mean? mean? <laughs> what I mean are kids that can focus... Are you suggesting we try to raise super kids? A... The, the bottom line is, is that... Is ADHD gonna, a real problem? Uh, why is it so common these days? Well, it's common because why we Why do boys get diagnosed with STD so much more frequently than where, girls do? Right. You know, it's, it's very tough for kids to step up to the plate and perform. I'll tell you, you who's trying to raise super kids. We tried to raise super Hitler kids. Hitler in 1939 attempted to raise super kids the way you are. You know, in the early uh, mid-30s to begin right. with, and then the later 30s, there was <laughs> yes. a gentleman that was uh, trying his own plan of raising super kids. And if we hadn't a cock blocked him, he might have uh, you know succeeded, who that was? and maybe you can succeed too, I think Dr. you know Cox. who that was, Dr. Cock. You know how that was? No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, on, uh, on I wish everyone could be as successful as you guys, but some kids need a little bit of help. All right. right. Dr. Cox. His name was Mitch Cumstein. <laughs> Dr. Cox, on page 205, it says... Don't, don't uh, scan. Find where you want to, uh, where you want to be. Can these super kids... Uh, uh, leap, to leap over uh, buildings in a single bound. Right. But super kids right. are also kids that are super efficient, super productive. You got it. Yeah, and Paris, I thought we have some of those. Yeah. Like tweakers. Well, what's that? Yes. Yeah. Super efficient and super productive, like ask, tweakers. We got, we got a call coming in from Don the Trucker. Don, you're on with um, Dr. Cox. Dr. Cox. Good morning. I have it here somewhere. It's Dr. Uh, hi, Don. You're on with uh, the good doctor. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, doctor. I just wanted to know, doctor, are you actually endorsing withholding medication from children with STDs? Mm. Oh. Hello? Oh. Well. That didn't go well. Oh. <laughs> what was he on about? <laughs> what was his... What was... Yeah, what did he have to say? I don't... <laughs> it wasn't being... Oh, really got to his point. That didn't go well. <laughs> what happened? How, what happened to the caller? The caller, like, asked a real question, and he hung up. I... Aww. Stumped the doctor. Yes. You know what? I don't think he'll ever finish his book if that's his attitude. No. <laughs> yeah. He really uh, seems to be a little lazy. I know. Sounds There's to me... No, I'm sorry, no discipline. Go ahead. No. Sounds to me like the old doc needs a dose of stick to itiveness. Yes. Yeah. What happened? He probably has ADD, I'll say. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's HD, AD, it's STD. HDTV. HDTV. Yes. He's got high definition television. <laughs> yeah. Is that a problem? It, it, yeah, it takes your attention away from book writing. Wow. That's right. Uh, are you suggesting we try to raise super kids? <laughs> How many fucking times? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Fucking authors. We are just the worst, man. <laughs> why did he hang up? I don't know. He had had it. I'll tell you why. Because he was being stumped with some tough questions. Yeah. And they don't like to be called the test. See, we put them to the test. We do. A lot yeah. of stations just uh, gloss over these things, ask them the questions. They give the answers. Sure. We give them impossible questions. They could never be answered. <laughs> right. All at the same time. <laughs> right. Right. It was fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I actually stole that. I'll tell you where I got it from. Bob Kelly played a prank phone call for me one day. It's a guy pretending to be an older black gentleman, and he's calling up to have his VCR repaired. And the VCR guy is trying to talk to him over the phone. The guy keeps going, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he curses too much. The guy, this is like... Let's bring it in. Uh, I don't know what it is. funny. Oh, man. 
It's before the Jerky Boys, I think. But the guy's like, and the motherfucking RCA of VCR, and the guy would try explaining it, and the guy would go, right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny. Oh, dude, it's a very funny prank call. If anybody out there might know who it is, that's why I'm saying that. Yeah. All right, we got this. Now push your ass in my face and let me tongue fuck you. Clean your head out with my tongue before you wash it. Yeah. Right. Right. These are these um, clips from, uh, it was actually called audio porn. Back in the 70s, they came out on 8-track, and you'd listen to these instead of watching porn. And it's not audio from a porn movie. It's They went into a yep. studio and poorly did these. Well, that's right. Phone sex. The 976 numbers you'd call, listen to yeah, the remember recorded those? stuff. 976. Yeah, a telemarketing job where I just, you know. Dial for free. Yeah, Put it yeah. On the company bill. We used to go into the job trailers that when they yeah when they're building a new development, the trailer is there yeah. for the job super and stuff. We'd go in there, pick up his phone, and just call sex lines. It must have been hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, this but is, it was before live stuff. It was oh, all yeah. recorded stuff. This that, is recorded I'm from Carmen the track. Anal Queen. And we, uh, we're keeping track of all the really great lines from this. Uh, the acting is up. horrid. This, is like this the, woman sounds like this. <laughs> I can't believe you're fucking me. Lick my, da, 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 da. Yeah, lick my cunt like Mrs. Howell. Is getting bagged they by get the, the professor. Organ music from the old radio shows, yeah. the old radio serials. <laughs> You're licking my pussy. Yes. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Wonderful. Roll over, damn it! Not on your life, baby. You left out the best part. Put your tongue up my asshole and start licking. <laughs> start licking. <laughs> See? Right. 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 Come on, Gidget. It's a man who means business. <laughs> Certainly does. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, Dr. Cox calling back? Oh, what happened? What What happened, Dan? It, it got dropped, right? Oh, by who? Oh, I love that. What? what, what? Yeah, I, th I don't think he hung up. Oh, what happened? <laughs> why don't we uh, we'll try why to get him back? Yeah, let's get Dr. Cox back. Bite me, fuck me, baby, fuck me, bite me and fuck me, put your hands under my ass and shove your cock under my belly, oh baby, you big baby. I think that's a fantastic example of ADHD. Bite me, fuck me, bite me, fuck me. She you, can't commit. She doesn't know. Put your hand under my ass. What, what do you she, want? What do you What do you want? Do you to be Do you medicate her so she fucked. just wants to be bitten or <laughs> yeah, uh, I, bite me? Fuck. Hey, baby, this is heaven, lover. Oh, you sure as hell are a born cockman. Oh, love it. Oh. It's a Foley guy there with two coconuts. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this O&A? Hey, Dr. Cox. No, this no, is, no, no. Uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> hello? Hi, I'm here. What happened? I don't know. I, I, I think something happened on your end. No, what it, Who, Who's this? Hey, this is Dr. Adam Cox. Oh, uh, oh, Dr. Adam Cox, why are you calling the show today? Well, you, you guys asked me to call you back. Oh, we just mm. talked to... Who? Is that yeah. the guy we... Who? You were just talking to me. That's right. The book, No Mind hey. Left Behind. What? Um, no. It's over. It's over by you. No Mind Left Behind. Oh, that's a... Oh, uh, what's uh, that book I about? Remember. It's a book about helping kids avoid this problem we call ADHD. See, you, uh, what I'll you got to do is get... You got to oh, yeah. get an, another idea, because if you keep writing the same book like over and over again... <laughs> we just talked gonna... to an author... <laughs> Ten minutes ago, who had the same idea for same a book? book. <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence? It yeah. certainly okay. is. <laughs> so, all right, so what can you tell us about this STD thing? Well, you guys, uh, I think by now we've established yeah. it's not STD. No, it's, it's HD HD TV, TV. which uh, is fantastic. You watch the game on it? No. No? <laughs> it's clear uh, as a bell. It's a widescreen, and uh, you feel like you're right on the field. Built for super kids. Exactly. HD TV, love it. <laughs> hey, hey, on um, on page two sixty one, why did you thank Morano Estroff? <laughs> why did I thank her? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she's uh, an editor at uh, Psychology Today who has oh. uh, done some good work. Doctor, being a psychologist, how do you feel? about testing pregnant mothers uh, for the possibility of Down syndrome. <laughs> I'm yeah. not kidding. 
I don't know why you're laughing at Down Syndrome. As a syndrome. psychologist, I don't really have an opinion well, on why that. Why would guy. you laugh at Down Syndrome? That's not funny. Well, He's no, it's not laughing. funny. But I mean, I you, got you wrote, why would you laugh at Down Syndrome? I don't yeah, they're know if talking we can about this conversation. That can show if, if a child's going to have Down Syndrome. And I'm wondering how you feel about that as somebody who's dealing with medications in children with learning disabilities. I'm starting to get the feeling that you guys are like, you know, the guys that I should have helped with my book many years ago because you're so distracted. But, see, you could have benefited from this stuff. God, but if I we could prevent these children from even entering the world, wouldn't that be mm -hmm. preferable that, to you having to treat them and wait, write I, books when you could be out oh, having a nice it, time? It would not be preferable. I need a lot of help. What could you help me with? <laughs> Well, yeah. Nature I, I mean, or nurture, doctor? Nature or nurture with uh, oh, this uh, a combination of ADHD, both, it? ADHD uh, oh, wise. Wow. Do you think there could be a test uh, 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 in utero that we can see if there is, and then maybe you know pull out that uh, plum tomato uh, before it grows into a burden? Well, you'd never want to do that, but of course you're right in that there may be a test one day that will then allow us to start helping these kids very early in their lives. In the perfect long, race. Terrific. So you're thinking of uh, dropping a few Xanax into a vagina uh, so the child can actually maybe have them uh, before he comes out? No, I wouldn't be thinking of that. No? So you're saying that Planned Parenthood should have, should have a dumpster full of Pete Rose wigs? <laughs> What I'm saying is that parents can Doctor, do remarkable things if yes. they start early enough. Why are you laughing life. at that joke? That's horrific. So you're saying that it is the parents' responsibility uh, for, uh, for the ADHD, and perhaps uh, they're the problem? Uh, I don't think that parents cause ADHD. Of course not. But I think mm -hmm. parents can do a whole lot to minimize the effect in a kid's life. And is is nothing so bad as getting to fifth or sixth grade and not having had any help, and then suddenly you feel overwhelmed because that's the age when kids, especially boys, yeah. turn about ten or eleven, and they haven't had mm. any help. They're in right. way over their heads because oh school gets very complicated by the time you right. get to fifth or sixth grade. Now, well, how come some kids can uh, hack it? And others uh, are, are uh, slackers. Well, that's just one of the differences. Why do some kids play football and some kids can't? I mean, it's just the way that we're all a little bit different. Well, that's well, more physical. Idea. Race, well, more obviously. physical than mental. Yes, and r race does come into play in certain aspects of that. But that's more a physical uh, uh, attribute than, than mental, sir. Doctor, uh, I, I, I'm thinking um, uh, it's all in the upbringing. I'm thinking, and is this uh, predominantly an American uh, disease? Uh, oh, that's uh, a great question. I know it is. And, I asked and, it. And it Anthony. is more of a problem in America, and the reason for that is that we live at a crazy pace. The pace of our culture is so hectic, and we push kids so hard to be productive, to be efficient, to be super kids. That mm. Uber kids Are you suggesting like we should try super to raise kids super kids? <laughs> That's asked and answered, fellas. When, when you raise kids. this breed of the master race, what will the world look like in 100 years? Good question. Uh, I, I have no idea because I'm not involved in that plan. Yeah, but because if, if you, you're against raising super kids. We found that out. <laughs> That's uh, right. I just want to know what would be the problem with a race of super children? Do you see kind of a children of the corn scenario? Yeah, that's right, because it just escalates and there's no end to it. And I'm just afraid that, you know, oh, we would have a bunch of kind of, you know, robots out there performing up to like some kind of super high expectation and we would lose. If the Bobby Fisher couldn't mm -hmm. concentrate on his schoolwork because he was just playing chess all day, what would you medicate him with? Right. <laughs> right. I don't know that I'd medicate him with anything. All right, let's go to the phones. Matt from Queensbury. Oh, uh, hi. I'm glad you got the doctor back on. I had a, a question for the doctor. Yes. You're on with Dr. Adam Cox. Oh, hi, Dr. Oh, Cox. hi, Adam. Um, I have to the a program. son. He's, he's eight years old. He's in third grade this year. And some things he's really advanced on and other things he's kind of more you know, average middle of the road, and I'm, I'm pretty much okay with that, but it seems like you're suggesting, suggesting that we should be building super kids, and I'm just wondering if that really falls into something I should be looking at. Mm. Well, I, I certainly don't think you should be trying to raise a super kid, but you might want to give your son a yeah, little bit more Yeah, thanks for the question, a, Matt. Uh, Billy in Connecticut. Yeah, hi, uh, Dr. Cox. Hello, Bill. With perfecting all of these flaws with every children at such a, such a young age, are you suggesting that we raise super kids? <laughs> are we Are we back from break yet? Oh, we're on the air. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, super kids. Um, Dr. Cox, come Let's go to Chris in uh, the Poconos. Chris? Hey, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested in this. i got a couple kids. Both of them have ADHD. 
And uh, Sorry to hear I went that, to the sir. website and it was it was appalling. It was drcox.com. It was nothing but porn. Dr. Cox, comment. Is there uh, maybe a website that's close to your website? Because yeah. he's saying that. Uh, I, I, well, you got to think drcox.com Dr. would have a lot of cox on it. Oh. Oh. How did you spell cox? C-O-X dot com. Oh, C-O-X. Lots of valuable, useful information for parents. All right. I got it. Especially you guys. You guys ought to be checking out my website because there's a ton there. That Absolutely. Yeah, you should have been really upfront about the spelling ahead of time. Yeah, that would have helped. Dr. Cox, are you suggesting we... Uh, raise a, a race of children that go to supercuts. <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting. No? Yeah, bad that. haircuts there. Right. Cheap, it's cheap, but it uh, uh, looks like a bowl to, was on their yeah. head. Let's go to Jamie. You're on with um, uh, Dr. Adam Hello. Crotch. Hello? Jamie? Hello? Yes. You're on with uh, Dr. Dix. Hey, doctor, first of all, I want to ask you, how can you even use a fucking term like Watch your language. dropping a Xanax in somebody's vagina that's a child? And for all you pompous asses that think you know something about children, you got to have one before you know what's going on with children. Very yeah, good. Okay. Which makes me kind of wonder, does anybody there have kids? I do. I have I three do. children. Yeah, I, exactly. I do. I do, doc. You my fucking doctor... He fucking says something like that. What kind of fucking term is that? Hey, 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 language, you language. Know, we, we understand oh, if you have a disagreement on, with his, uh... Yes. But... I know a lot of people are upset about you uh, suggesting that we raise super kids, uh... Yeah, and that's, um... Fuck you, man. It's preposterous. Fuck you. And hey, I hey, you hey. What do you, how do you even use a term like that? Regarding a child, Doctor Cox, Doctor Cox, language, right, please. Are you saying I gotta, you don't want to raise super kids. I got. I I hung up on him. Uh, Doc, I do have three kids. You do. Yes. Uh, and only one out of the three has HD TV. So. <laughs> yeah. How, so, how we're many? We're talking about technology here, right? How many children do you have, Doctor Dix? I have one. Okay. One child, a perfect super child, I, I suppose. So Harry. <laughs> that would um, be great. Harry. <laughs> Harry. His name is not Harry Cox. Stop it. Stop with the juvenile humor. Yes. Can I help you? Is Anita on the phone? Anita. All right, we're on the air. Is that in three, uh, two, a sister? Uh, one. Anita. And go. Anita. Anita Cox? So, Black, Black, <laughs> is, uh, is your book out now or is it coming out? The book is out. No mind left behind. And is it in libraries? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, you can get it at your local library. Frankly, I don't care where you get it as long as you read it because I want you to help your read. kids. Well, yeah, I have a hard time reading because I, my mind jumps around a lot. Is there an audio hey, book? i, I got to ask uh, the good doctor, if this book is about a, a, ADHD, right? Yeah. Why would you – how many pages is this thing? Why wouldn't you just like put a lot of information on the first two pages and keep the rest of them blank? They yeah. just keep going back Simplify. anyway. Simplify. Simplify. I got to tell you, if someone had helped your parents with you guys, we wouldn't. Be, this this conversation would sound very different. Isn't it the worst? I know. What what's <laughs> wrong with this conversation? <laughs> hey man, right? Hey, we're getting if some this nice distraction. I don't know well, what it is. We're yeah, the some doctor we talked there. to before you a few minutes back yeah, that went quite smoothly. So maybe yeah. the onus is on you, sir. Yeah, let's go to Jay in Philly. He's got a good. Uh, uh, question for All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, guys. Uh, Adam, does that's Dr. right. Cox Adam. Have any uh, kids of his own? Yeah, he has one. I believe. Yeah, one child. Oh, so he's raising. No, he has Cox. three children. No, he has one. Oh, and that's Dr. you. Cox have, has you have three. Doctor Norton. Oh, wait, no, I have children. I'm sorry, I forgot. Doctor Norton has. Uh, what? Uh, three. Um, looking for a, a caller with it. We have so many calls coming in with some fantastic a lot of questions. Want to talk about this. Wade in Minnesota. Wade, you're yeah, on with. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wade. Wade, you're on yeah, with. Yeah. Um, a, a uh, doctor. Doc, doc, yeah, doctor. I got I got a problem. I'm wondering if I might be a little ADHD because you know I'm trying to count the cars in that, and I keep uh, I uh, you know we keep a good count of the cars, and I, every time I go through to try to count them. I, I come up a little bit short, and I got this plan, see, and I can't really put it together. Wondering if, if maybe going through uh, uh, the good doctor and maybe he might be able to prescribe something. Because um, I keep kind of going in different directions. Do I need a wood chipper, eh? 
Well, no, really, it some, sounds like you may have a problem with distraction, or you may just have a problem yeah. with well, counting. I think you are asking the question of the wrong person. You should be talking to a doctor. This is a writer we have on the phone yes. that's written a book about <laughs> doctors treating yeah. HIV. Yeah, so no, no, no. We keep good count of the cards. We got them. Yeah. We got them off. Oh, well, yeah. those are uh, those are some sweet numbers. So uh, there's that's a, it's a hell of a plan there. Have you always <laughs> wanted to be a writer? Yeah. Have I always wanted to be a writer? Yes. No. For many years, I was an artist. I became a doctor by accident. Oh, an artist, a painter or sculptor? What type painter, of artist? Yeah, Did, a painter. What's yeah. your fascination with doctors? <laughs> no fascination with doctors. Then That's what's your fun. fascination with Cox? When I, when I was an artist, I ended up teaching young kids how to paint and draw. I came to the realization that that was my calling. I work with kids, and I've spent my life trying to help oh. kids become oh. as good as they can be so, without putting them so in a doc, situation I, where I gotta, was, When did right. you realize you had the, uh, the ADD? <laughs> I'm blessed. I don't have ADD. Good, then, good. Thank then, God. Then how could you possibly yeah, write you. about it? Yeah, did you guys play the... Well, because I spent over a decade working with kids that do have that problem. <laughs> Excuse me, lover of, lover of, is this your first, your first uh, book or is this your second book? Second book. Oh, what was the first one about, sir? It was called Boys of Few Words. And that was about um, <laughs> auti autism. <laughs> about boys who have trouble communicating and expressing themselves. Oh, of course. Not you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, would I, I grew that was up about old school. Too. My dad, if I had a tr trouble communicating, he'd smack me in the head and say, get the cock out of your mouth and speak, motherfucker. <laughs> And that's uh, how do you how do you react to, to that's that? That's a type horrible. Of, uh, I think it, it, it seems to explain an awful lot. That's a horrible thing that he should probably look into now that he's older, and uh, perhaps you'd, uh, you'd oh, benefit he's, he's from dead. some type of psychiatry. Eat a lot of psychologist. Um. Yeah. Hey, uh, Craves unclipped. Um, what would you say is the greatest mistake parents make? That's a good question. What, what would I say the is the greatest single mistake greatest mistake? Make? Yeah. Well, wow, that's a big question. The biggest mistake they make about what? About uh, raising their children, of course. And, 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 and doing things that will foster uh, an attitude or an atmosphere that would be conducive uh, with ADHD. But like, what is the best way, would you say, if somebody wants to kind of step in and circumvent that like without it? Well, the, right. the number one thing that they can do mm -hmm. is to try to... That question is brought to you by Sammy's Aluminum Siding. Sammy's Aluminum Siding, 423-3112. Sorry, I just had to get that in. Uh, hey, uh, ADHD yeah. or AD Blu-ray? What do you think the future uh, holds? Uh, man, I don't even know what AD Blu-ray is. Uh, uh, yeah, say it's like beta. Uh, which is easier to treat, a 720p or a 1080i? <laughs> Again, I'm afraid I'm not an expert there, guys. Thomas the Trucker, you got Sorry. a question for... Hello? Hey. Uh, hey, Thomas the Trucker. You got a question for... Dr. Adams. Adam. Yeah. Um, Dr. Uh, I heard uh, yes. Dr. Cox saying uh, spanking's a bad idea. I was wondering if he had any other suggestions for discipline. Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can... Mouth fucking work. Mouth fucking work. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry? My goodness. Uh, you don't want to hear that, sir. That yeah, was obviously a prank caller. I'm really sorry about that. But he did, that. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know where these people come from I have from noticed sometimes. a lot of drug commercials on, uh, Doctor. Uh, this uh, Over the past uh, 10 years or so, uh, we just seem to be inundated with these drugs. Like, uh, for the slightest problem, we're supposed to uh, go ask our doctor about this. How do you feel about that? I think you're right. I think that's an excellent point. That Thank you. We yes, seem Anthony to again. become uh, over-dependent upon medicine for all kinds of things, including when we kids have like a baby. Hey, hey, baby, this is yeah. heaven lover. Exactly. Oh, you sure as hell are a feel. born coxman. Yeah. Oh, we love it this way. Oh. That's how I feel. If uh, if I, I would care about your answer if I just hadn't had so much Xanax today. But um, that's a good answer to a great question. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been on any uh, type of a psychi uh, psy psychiatric uh, drugs? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure how that's relevant <laughs> to, to our interview here today. Oh, that, that's a yes. Uh, be it not because it, 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 would, uh, it would almost give some validity to the um, anti-drug stance you're taking. Yeah. 
Well, the, the important thing is not uh, what, what, you, what medicine you guys have taken or what medicine I may have taken, but the important thing is that young minds... My, child's, need... my child has uh, what they call leukemia, and they try to push a lot of drugs on us, chemotherapy, radiation, and I say, no, we're doing this all natural. Right. It's a very different Herbal situation. Herbal teas... It's a life-threatening situation, and you need to use, in that case, of course, medicine is going to be the best, uh, the best uh, option. Well, see, but what we're talking about, guys, what the book is about, yeah. is what we call options of first resort. Options of first resort. Right. Now, Rather, the medicine should mean? be an option of last resort, and what I'm writing about are the options of first resort. What should you do before? Tommy Westchester, you got to oh, gotcha. yeah, Dancing hi, hi, with guys. gay guys is on Springer. Tom? Well, hi, guys. Jesus. Listen, yeah, listen, uh, I'm, trying gotta, to raise, you, I'm trying to raise a super kid. Yep. And um, he's 11 years old, 142 IQ. We went into the bedroom where he was supposed to be studying, and he says to us, he's in my wife's dress, he says, I like to wear nail polish and, wear, and watch werewolf movies. Isn't that young, uh, I remember your call, your, your, his name is William, right? His name is young William. Yeah. So what do I do? I tried my best, and he's wearing ladies' dresses. And Let him do polish. as he pleases. Right, right. doctor? Yeah. All right, William. Well, Come on out, William. Come on, William. Talk to the doctor. Uh, doctor, um, William. Please. No. All right, thank I you. Think, I don't think William's call. queued up. <laughs> uh, doctor, are you a fan of uh, yellow discipline? For the for, I'm a fan for, of what? Yellow discipline oh, yeah. for kids I don't know that are suffering that is, from guys. ADHD. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know what yellow discipline is. Oh, okay. A child that's uh, afraid you, of monster rain, say. Uh, where that's something he really should be taking mm, part true, in. True, true. That freezes yeah. up right before the monster rain. Yeah, uh, that's, that's not something I know anything Another about. Another thing afraid. that, uh, hmm. so you think these drug companies are uh, making a, a big bucks off of our uh, children that, uh, when yeah. this could be treated in the home just uh, by p parenting and uh, lessons that can be learned from your book? Absolutely. Now, yeah, the do. five things you must do if they say your child has uh, STD. I would say to the teacher, uh, probably something, excuse my language, but I'd say bullshit, you're the one that screwed up, and then I'd grab my kid by the arm and, and pull really hard and get him out of there, right. that, that school. Yes. Hey, well, let, let me ask you guys about this, because here's okay. one of the five things you should do. is like okay. You five should be a just... coach rather than a boss. Everybody coach? hates the voice of a boss, but people right. kind of like and respond to the voice of a coach. You know what I mean? I, I You I, know something? It's more of a, a boss is talk down to you. Yeah. A coach yeah. or something that, is more talk you up. Motivate you. Right. Yes, and yes, our I boss like to be the, is a drunk. Great. Yes, that's exactly the difference. Yes. And also, and a coach, again, a coach Anthony. Anthony. Uh, my name is Anthony Cumia, by the way. Uh, I like to think of time. myself as the Bobby Knight in my son's life. Well, probably a bad coach to uh, take an example of. Well, it's effective. You choke your kids. Yeah, that's not yes. what a coach does, but a no. coach can be very demanding. Hey, you you, want, you guys watched football yesterday? There's a lot of very demanding coaches. I certainly did. Made a bundle. They're hard on those players, but the players play up to their Bar ability on. because they're not Bar talking to them like they're a boss. Really they're not talking so down to them. Yeah, they're and they all shower to together at the end, and that's what... That's what made Bill Parcells great. <laughs> Spinning so people. shower, shower <laughs> with your children. Three donuts in the over and over. No. <laughs> Three jokes. Line of the day is brought to you by <laughs> BodogFantasy.net. Variations of the three same tired <laughs> jokes for 40 minutes. <laughs> there's no game plan that shows. <laughs> let's, oh, yes, uh, let's try and wing it. <laughs> Smashing a brick wall. <laughs> Ten oh eight. <laughs> Let's do line of the day. It's brought to you by BodogFantasy.net. Keep hoping for magic. <laughs> <laughs> Just shit. This is <laughs> questions handed to us last minute. Could have had them an hour before. We could have just changed it a little bit and had some fun. See? Fucking five dopes jumping over each other to say something obnoxious. <laughs> We should all be shot. We should all be shot in the mouth with a shit gun. <laughs> no fucking game plan whatsoever. A room full of fucking ten-year-old shit dicks trying to say naughty things to the doctor. Maybe this will bring us out of the fucking spiral that we've been in for an hour. <laughs> 
just dancing with gays on both channels now. <laughs>